Welcome back everybody. Why are we staring at this bear cane nondescript looking thing? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is my Dendrobium anosmum and I have to show you this. That is a new growth and I am very, very, very happy. So welcome to the third episode of Bits and Bobs and Surprises. My new growth of Dendrobium anosmum just kicks off a few clips of things that I have seen over the past couple of days and I've accumulated them and put them together for you to have a look at. So this is very, very important for me. I'm extremely happy to see it. When I see roots, this one is coming off the mount and going in a pot. Because it lives outside all year round, I have no issues with any kind of real estate allocation at all. So yes, an osmum, a sign of life. I'm so happy. Well, 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 I haven't seen one of these in a long time. Oof, I saw a bird for a lot. At least nature's coming back. But this, an aircraft, that hasn't happened in about two months. I'm back to the orchid subject on hand. This is my Vanda tessellata, supposedly black. I wouldn't know because it hasn't bloomed for me yet. What I have observed, however, is this incredible root growth. It's just a joy to behold on this Vanda. And it, of course, you know, I know about this one cakey right here. So I know about that. But lo and behold, it's doing another one right in there. Right in the bang in the middle again how it's going to get out and become anything substantial i have no idea but i'm looking forward to finding out because these guys are tough the leaves on this orchid are just steel it's incredible so that will be something exciting to look out for having said that what about this Ta -da! Oh my goodness, look. I saw this this morning. That, peoples, I strongly believe, firmly believe, is a flower spike. And there's more. I'm going to be very, very careful so that I don't distort the image because they are really just peeking out tiny. You know, me on my morning walk. Where are you? I saw you. Don't do this to me. There. On my morning walk, I'm looking around. Look at that. I think that's another one. But if I'm not mistaken, I saw a third. Or I'm pushing my luck now. I'm not sure. Yeah, look. All right, I'm going to go down, look, around the back, next to the root. I don't know if that is another root coming out or another flower spike. However, this is a flower spike. I am 100% sure of it. Eek! Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. But there, it looks to me like there's one. So we'll see what this is all about. Very exciting. I have to show everyone that is not following me on Instagram <clears throat> the changes for the intermediate summer setup. Please note that it is of fundamental importance that there is a unicorn pattern on your beach umbrella. Otherwise, this how do I shade my and grey comes in the summer concept may not work. 
So this is a very, very, very valid, valid top tip. Unicorn pattern on a beach umbrella, courtesy of my daughter. And Graycombs have shade. Very valuable. This will save your and Graycombs. And you're welcome. <laughs> this is not orchid related. But I just thought I'd show you my Gloriosa lily coming up. I bought tubers in August of 2019 from the UK and I was hoping they would ship it to me because I'm living in a different climate. I could have cultivated them throughout the winter, but they didn't do that. And they are coming up. I had, I ordered six and I can see five have come up. These three, for some reason, there's one there. There should be one lying in here. It hasn't come up. This one right here finally came up. I thought I only had like 50% result. The reason I'm growing this is because it is the unofficial flower, national flower of Kenya. <clears throat> and uh, it used to envelop one of the flame trees in my garden in Kenya when I was a child. And the flame tree and the Gloriosa lived in harmony and the combination was just magnificent. So I used to grow these at another property. Life changed and I ordered myself some more. And now I've got five coming up and I'm just going to let them grow up against this railing here and cover all this nasty part here and then We'll see what happens. So I'm super excited. I know this isn't orchid related, but bits and bobs and surprises, you know? I love these guys. These are very important to me. Did you know that the national flower of Kenya actually is the tropical orchid? They're not specific about which tropical orchid, but that's what it is. Tropical orchid, national flower of Kenya. So we're, 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 we're getting there. We're matching up. Look at how I'm training it to get the tendrils. These guys are trying to catch each other. I'm gonna get, I'm wrapping the tendrils around the um, iron grating. I don't need to put up any kind of trellis. These guys find their way and then they grow like a weed. If they have the right conditions, they grow like a weed. It's gonna be a nightmare to get rid of them or take them down in the winter. But I love it. I love seeing this. Oh, this makes me very happy as well. So I hope you don't mind me just de deviating from orchid subject. I wanted to show you my Gloriosa lilies are on the way. Back to orchids. Remember this guy? I made a video about tea time with orchids and the lemon and tea bag method. Remember this guy and its little growth? Look, look what's happening. My Cattleya holdenii is getting roots. And this on a holdenii is way early for roots, which is awesome, no complaints, but it is way early because normally the holdenii will only produce roots once the growth is like three quarters already grown. So that's when it brings out the roots. And I was concerned that this one didn't have enough strength to grow to three quarter size before it would produce roots and it would actually, you know, absorb all the energy from the other bulbs. But no, look, happy days. And now all I have it in is my typical 300 ppm nu nutrition solution. That's all it is in. The roots don't touch it yet. But the back of the rhizome still touches that 300 solution. The tea and everything had by now evaporated. I just left it because there's not much in the bottom anyway. I let it evaporate and I've just filled up with the 300 ppm fertilizer solution. Roots, people. Hold any eye cut. This is great news. I am over the moon happy. Ta-da! What are we looking at? Coilostylus ciliaris. 
this would be a first time bloomer for me on this plant which I think is fabulous maybe another one will develop over there it is only in lava rock doing really really well in that media I've now let the little moss grow on the top because it's well established and I can control the base early days I actually removed the moss because I didn't want it to affect the rhizome but now we have movement these are last year's growth boy were they stuck together with happy sap I had to actually take a my little paintbrush and move with water in between the leaf joint apex because they wouldn't open at all they were glued together with all the happy sap but now here we are fingers crossed we're not gonna mess this up and we will have some blooms dendrobium unicum this is my second plant my replacement plant in case my first one wasn't going to be successful so this is the new growth that it came with and I'm very happy to say that it is developing really well so that's great I have obviously not moved it from its original mount we're gonna wait for roots and before we do that the coup de gras however is my first plant if you remember, if you saw, if you didn't, I'll put up a card, my mounts video, where I showed that I got this unicum with this cane snapped. But now it's on its own, doing its own thing with a new growth. Eso es muy importante, and I'm really, really happy about it. No new roots, fine, not a problem. It is growing its own new growth, and I am certain that we are able that this one is now not going to go downhill and whatever else it is doing on its cane it, I, it better be keikis you see this old cane here there are these two nubbins i don't know what you're up to but if your blooms i don't want that to bloom i will take it off if they're keikis i will be thrilled I know that sounds a little bit like contrary to what we're trying to do with our orchids. We want them to bloom, but not in this case. So I'm hoping for keikis. The more the merrier in this situation. No prizes for guessing why I'm over the moon about this one. Just to wrap things up with my little bits and bobs and surprises. This is my commercial complex hybrid Phalaenopsis harlequin that I cut two spikes off over the winter because I wasn't happy with its vegetative growth and its stability in the pot and it is growing a root and it's going in the right direction all this other spindly nonsense here that I have to try to redirect to get it into the pot this one makes me happy you guys <laughs> it's possible that I may just get this one established over this growing season and then I can show some harlequin blooms again come winter so <laughs> thank you everybody very much for watching i hope you didn't mind that i added some individual clips of other things going on not orchid related but while we were at it you know surprises we can define that in many many ways so i appreciate you being here and uh, hope you everybody has a wonderful day and i'll see you next time bye Thank you.